today we're here in Stillwater at the gardens of our Daily Bread Food and Resource Center. If you were with us last year when we visited this garden, you know this is a new community gardening project. And we've been at it now for just over a year. So I thought it would be a, a good time to, to come back and, and look at one particular project that uh, we think a lot of people are interested in. And that's our Bermuda grass control project using non-chemical means. So, uh, since last year, I, I'm going to say we've been moderately successful keeping our Bermuda grass under control. It's not 100% gone, as, as you're about to see, but we have been, uh, uh, I'm, I'm pleased with our progress. Now, uh, before you think, oh great, this is easy, it's very important for you to know that our garden here is, is roughly 7,000 square feet. And in that 7,000 square feet, we have spent in excess of 600 volunteer hours dedicated strictly to Bermuda grass eradication. So it's very important, uh, if you just have one take home message from this, this session, uh, it's important to know that uh, Bermuda grass removal and control is an ongoing project. You always have to stay on top of it or it's going to fail. Even if we don't see any Bermuda grass today, that doesn't mean it's gone. And, and we're, actually, uh, we're actually doing this segment the last week of March, and so the Bermuda grass is just waking up. So let's go over here and, and have a close look, and, and there's a couple of things I want to point out to you. So this area right here you can see is, is basically uh, wood chip mulch, and there are several layers of cardboard underneath this so we, we've got multiple layers of cardboard and then several inches of of wood chips on top of that and this is our third time let's see yes that's correct uh, since we began this last year on this particular section right here we've covered it with cardboard multiple layers added wood chips and then when the Bermuda grass starts crawling up through all of that and surfaces we've gone in raked it away removed the old cardboard, taken out all the live Bermuda grass, and then started all over. We've done that three times on this area over the last year. So right here, if you look closely, here's one little sprig of Bermuda grass that's popped up through the ground. You think, no big deal, I'll just pop that off and break that off and problem solved. But let's look a little closer here and see what we find. Look what we're starting to see here. Okay, we have a lot of, lot of uh, underground stems, which we call rhizomes, of course. Uh, some of these are kind of dark. That, that's probably dead right there. But this right here, that's fleshy, soft, pliable. That's a new plant ready to go. So right here we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, there's seven new Bermuda plants right here just waiting for sunshine and warm weather. So we're not even close to getting this killed off yet. Once again, we'll go in, pull the wood chips back, remove all of the live plant tissue that we can, and then start the process over again. If we dig a little deeper, the soil's really wet right now. We've had a lot of rain here in Payne County. But if we dig a little deeper, one of the benefits, the, the hidden benefits of, of the cardboard is it's actually helping improve the soil. So this is uh, actually pretty good soil for Payne County. Uh, it's heavy by ideal standards, but uh, if you look at this, even though it is, it is just saturated right now, you can see that it's, it's fairly loose and friable. So, uh, so a secondary benefit to, to using this method to kill off the Bermuda grass is, uh, is we're actually improving the soil here. So maybe in another couple of years, we can come along here and we can pull all of these wood chips back. We could come in here and dig off this improved soil, incorporate that into our raised beds, and then continue with our, our project. A uh, couple of other things that I, I want you to uh, be aware of before you tackle a project like this on home, and on, in your own garden is uh, over here we have a, a load of wood chips that have been supplied by a local tree service. Works really well for this. 
but that pile uh, is, a, is either number eight or number nine that we have used. So you understand that you're gonna be going through a lot of bulk of, of wood chips when you start a project like this. And then another thing is the cardboard. So here's an example of, of cardboard that, that we get here at Our Daily Bread. You know, it was made for produce, so it has a lot of holes in it. This right here is absolutely worthless for trying to keep Bermuda grass out because even if we fold it up or whatever we do with it, there's all kinds of places here for the Bermuda grass just to run in and around and out and it just doesn't work for us. So you want to go with, with uh, large pieces of cardboard. When you put one piece of cardboard over another, once again, this is not the correct material to use, but you can appreciate the example. Overlap it several inches to make it harder for that Bermuda grass to crawl over here, come up, and then crawl back because that's exactly what the stuff will do. Uh, uh, personally, uh, I like to find either utility boxes or, or if you, you have a local bike shop, someplace that, that uh, receives goods with, with enormous boxes, that's actually much more effective. Uh, so anyway, uh, I don't want you to think this, pro this can't not be done, but I do want you to understand that it's, it's, a, it's a challenge and it, it, it's an ongoing effort. So I hope you find this helpful. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.